This is the Project 41, a 1950s era Soviet destroyer placed at Tier 3 BR 4.7 and costing 7,080 Golden Eagles. The Project 41 was added to the game in War Thunder's Viking Fury update and is due to be removed from sale in the upcoming New Power update after changes to naval research. I would like to start by first thanking my Patreon supporters, whose donations went towards me purchasing this vessel during the recent War Thunder anniversary discounts. So to begin with the weaponry of the Project 41, the main caliber armament consists of a pair of dual 130mm turrets which have a fire rate of up to 15 rounds per minute when using the first stage ammunition and then 12 rounds per minute once the first stage ammunition has been expended. Ammunition options for these guns include high explosive rounds, semi armor piercing rounds and HEVT. Personally, I take out the semi-armor piercing rounds, as they prove to be useful against some of the more heavily armored vessels you may face, as well as also being more effective against anti-frag armor than the high explosive rounds. I also tend to bring along a supply of HEVT rounds for dealing with enemy aircraft, as these have proven to be rather capable in that role. The secondary armament on the Project 41 consists of four quad 45mm turrets. These simply excel at closer ranges in the anti-aircraft role as well as being highly effective against enemy ships, especially smaller boats and other destroyers. In most cases these guns will simply demolish enemy vessels, however due to these belts consisting entirely of high explosive rounds, they will become fairly ineffective when facing anti-frag armor. In addition, the Project 41 can use torpedoes which are fired from two centrally mounted launchers and a pair of RBU 2500 mortars mounted at the stern of the vessel. Personally, I tend to run without the torpedoes as they seem to be quite the explosion risk and I never really find myself using them that often. However, I do bring along the RBUs as they have proven to be highly effective at closer range in my personal experience. Moving on to mobility, the Project 41 is capable of sailing at up to 39 miles an hour or 62 kilometers per hour. This is in a similar ballpark to majority of the other destroyers around this BR, meaning that the 41 will not find itself being left behind. As for steering the vessel, it doesn't feel too heavy and seems to turn as would be expected for a vessel of this size, making the vessel quite easy to maneuver on most maps. Jumping over to survivability, the Project 41 has a fairly limited amount of armor, with anti-fragmentation armor surrounding the primary and secondary turrets, as well as the superstructure of the vessel. This armor may protect those modules from a bit of splash damage, although in my experience it won't really stop anything that you will find yourself facing. The vessel has a crew complement of 325, and while this is a respectable amount for a destroyer, I have found personally that this complement will rather quickly be knocked down as soon as you are exposed to enemy fire. This is why personally I prefer to keep the vessel near islands, to allow for a quick escape to cover if I find myself overwhelmed. Something especially dangerous are small motor gunboats with high fire rate cannons. In most cases, these guns will have no trouble going through the hull of the 41 and will rapidly knock out each module of your ship. In addition, destroyers and frigates with high fire rate weapons will also be especially dangerous for the same reasons as the previously mentioned motor gunboats. On another point of note, the Project 41 has both a search and a tracking radar, which allows you to lock up enemy air targets and for you to be given a lead indicator. This is something that is especially useful when attempting to use the main caliber HEVT rounds, especially at long range. So getting into some gameplay, of course playing Naval RB. Our first match is a conquest game, not exactly a mode I prefer, but at least in this case I have plenty of islands so I can maintain cover. First enemy I engage, uh, an enemy destroyer, me and a friendly destroyer had already knocked down their crew count quite a lot, and in this case I'm just finishing them off from cover, and it only takes a few more shots just to knock out the remainder of their crew, giving me a relatively simple first kill. After waiting out some enemy torpedoes that were going past, I move back out and engage an enemy Fletcher who was causing trouble for some other friendly vessels. In this case they were in smoke but I start to engage and they were already on relatively low crew count and at this point they can't even repair their vessel so I just need to continue to knock them down with a few more shots. They do fire a few shots at me but it doesn't really lead to anything and that's a relatively easy second kill. 
So now to show off the HEVT anti-air capabilities. Locked up with the radar, fired the shots, and yeah, just goes in nicely, lands near that Heinkel 111, explodes, and takes him out. And a little later, I'm then engaging a cruiser, an Emden, a German cruiser. Uh, now initially I was using my main guns, but as they turned to face me, I switched to the secondaries, the quad 45mm turrets, to attempt to just knock out all of the guns on the front of their ship, so that they, one, can't shoot me, and two, so that I can relatively quickly knock out the remainder of their crew. That, of course, does work out, and I get a kill, and then a little later I also get a second air kill, for a year two bomber that my secondaries had fired on and damaged previously. A little later, my team had essentially almost completed capping the uh, the main zone in this game, and it was just a case of stopping any enemy destroyers from advancing into the zone. As you saw there, I used the secondaries to knock out a Type 1934 destroyer uh, incredibly quickly, and you would have seen just how effective they were at just knocking down the crew of those enemy destroyers. As mentioned, these secondaries will absolutely rip through anything you face unless they have anti-frag armor, as these guns do use high explosive rounds. A enemy torpedo boat was behind me. I relatively quickly finished him off, uh, knocking the crew down to a point that he couldn't repair uh, before he went behind a part of a bridge, and then he came out again and I was able to finish him off. And again, I take out another Fletcher, again using the secondary. And here we have uh, an enemy destroyer who I fired on and essentially over the course of about 30 seconds I took him from full health all the way down to zero with uh, relatively little effort really just aiming up with the secondaries and just spamming as much gunfire as possible in his general direction. Anyway the game ended we won first on the team seven naval kills two assists and two air kills and we have the exact same result from this game however there are quite a few differences in this case we have a triple cap game and I decide to primarily focus on the B point now this is in a group of islands which does allow me to maintain some cover however it will put me quite close to the enemy's small boat spawns meaning that I may be at risk of getting torpedoed Nonetheless, though, you would have seen that I already took out the same Spaviero twice over, which I think did discourage him from going for the B-point, as well as a Japanese K7 using both the secondaries and the main guns. Now we have another Fletcher-class destroyer. This time I elect to use the RBU 2500s, which make very short work. As soon as those rockets contact the enemy vessel, it just completely obliterates him, and, you know, you get anywhere near the ammo rack or any form of ammunition on that enemy vessel, and, yeah, it'll go up, as it just did. As for enemy aircraft, uh, you'll see that my secondaries are by themselves firing. I turn them off because I don't want to expose my location, but the ammo I had already fired was enough to go and finish off a small enemy aircraft. A little later, I'm sailing around, and dun-dun-dun! Torpedo boat at rather close range, which is rather worrying for a vessel of my size. I go over to the secondaries, manually fire the secondaries, and very quickly finish him off, but it was a bloody close call for one of the torpedoes that that boat released. Nonetheless though, I did survive the engagement and continued to defend the B point. Uh, here we have another torpedo boat rushing, and as you can see, the secondaries make rather short work of anything that kind of size. A short while later, I then have another Fletcher-class destroyer attempting to push the B-point. So, I decide to just fire everything. I'm shooting at him with the main guns, got the secondaries going, and I decide just to yet again spam some of those RBU 2500s towards the enemy vessel, which again, do a spectacular job at just completely destroying it. These things really are amazing at closer range, especially for killing destroyers incredibly quickly. Nonetheless though, that was my seventh naval kill, and now I just need one more air kill to get the final kill of the game. So I fired off some shots using the lead indicator, and they just really nicely just curve through the air and blow up the enemy torpedo bomber. So a pretty good game yet again. Again, I'm getting two assists, seven naval kills, and two air kills. So overall, a pretty good match and yet another victory. 
So there we go, those games were not only some of my better matches in the vessel, but hopefully did demonstrate a majority of the weapons, such as the main caliber guns for both anti-ship and anti-aircraft, and then also the same for the secondaries. Of course, I also demonstrated the use of the RBU 2500s, which I must say have become a bit of a personal favorite, especially at closer ranges against destroyers, just because of how quickly they can take out enemy vessels. I would like to yet again thank my Patreon supporters for allowing me to grab this vessel prior to its removal from sale. Hopefully this video will help a few others decide whether or not to pick it up prior to its removal. Personally, I will continue to use the Project 41 as my primary Russian grinding premium for naval for quite a while I suspect, as it is efficient for researching majority of the Russian cruisers, even in the new tech tree layout, and it's also quite a fun vessel to play and rather cool looking in my opinion. Anyway though, that will be it from me, thank you very much for watching the video, hopefully you did enjoy or found it informative. If you did, please consider dropping a like, and if you wish to see more content such as this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.